So for a quick overview of the car before I put it into my system, um, I just got done unboxing it, took all the plastic off, it came with the typical nice rubber covers on all of the I.O., which HDMI, 3 display port, and a DVI, a little bit better than the uh, reference RX480. And uh, it's a little bit longer PCB. It has these hard swap fans, which XFX has advertised quite extensively. You pinch these two. I pulled it out a second ago. There it goes. And uh, there, fans come out. Uh, they sell different ones with uh, LEDs, whatever, if you want more lights in your system. There's a little contacts. There's actually a separate PCB that runs across the bottom to connect the two fans to. But uh, they're pretty easy to do. You just set them in and push it down and you'll hear the two things click and you're good to go. Top of the card you can see it has this really nice neutral black top with a uh, RGB XFX logo so you can set that to whatever color you want. I believe. I have not tested that yet. And uh, the glorious 8-pin power that so many people wanted uh, appears to be not needed. However, uh, for the sake of overclocking and uh, peace of mind that we're not pulling as much current or power through the uh, PCI slot, this here is actually uh, pretty nice. Back of the card. Set it up here. Really nice uh, back plate on it. There's some uh, holes in it up in here for, I guess, where the VRMs get hot and helps vent the back better. Um, really one of the prettiest uh, back plates that I've seen so far. And uh, the end. One thing I'm not so happy about is this power. I was kind of hoping it would be uh, facing off this side. But uh, the appearance of the cooler and the performance of the cooler, as I have been told, is supposed to make up for that. So today I'll be upgrading from a Radeon HD 7970. This is a power color card. and. Uh, while it has been very good to me, I'm getting ready for a Zen build in the future. And the RX 480 was the card that fit the budget. This is an 8350 build, 16 gigs of RAM, and Crosshair 5 motherboard. I know the power supply is overkill, but I used to have Crossfire in here, so that's the reason for it. The new card is in. That's what it looks like in the system. I gotta admit that nice black backplate makes it look much better than the red card did. Even though red kind of matched my system, I just feel like this is a little better looking. I have the card hooked up to DVI because it's the only cable I had spare laying around and it's only 1080p anyway. So I hit the power and start it up the first time. A light up there, blue. Not sure what that means, but XFX is lit up white, which uh, looks pretty cool. I got the uh, red fans here, or white fans, geez. I don't have a good screen recording software that seems to work with my mic. I'm uh, going to do this from my phone here, but it uh, should be the same. I did a couple of uh, graphics here to show you the uh, improvement in performance from GCN 1.0 with the 7970. This is my uh, earlier build with the Crossfire 7870s. 7970. 7870s. This is a Kaveri 7850 and this is my 280X. Or geez, 480. Wow, tongue twisters today. So, this is at stock clocks 
which is slightly overclocked from the reference clocks. Um, these other three are overclocked to their max. This is about 4.1 on the CPU, 900 on the GPU. I just got the same CPU as my current 480 spec. That's why all the physics will be identical. The only thing I changed was the card on these. Um, and the cards were overclocked. These were gigahertz editions. So 1.1 something. This was like uh, 1.025, something like that. But uh, you can see almost double the performance here from 7970 to 480. Even faster than the uh, Crossfire 7870s. So that's impressive here in CloudGate. Um, this was weird. I didn't see any overall improvement, but the physics went up by 20,000. Still, I'm not sure how of it, you know, accurate this is or even relevant because I was getting 200 some FPS. So, Fire Strike, um, you know, big improvement. Went from 8,000 to about 1350, I think. And, uh, that's pretty good. It's, you know, 60% ish performance improvement over the first gen. Uh, Skydiver here. This one saw a pretty huge improvement. I went up to 43, I think it was. 41. There it is. And, uh, it's in at 26. So, 80% improvement, roughly. Pretty big. The Kaveri system pulling only 7,000. And DirectX 12. This is one of the more impressive one. The uh, graphics score here was 4,000, and here we had about 2,000. So almost double in DirectX 12 compared to first generation GCN, which is very impressive. All right, I'm gonna end this video off with a couple of the screenshots that I had from uh, the all of the tests that we're seeing in the uh, charts up ahead. A couple of them that weren't included, like uh, API overhead test here, Cinebench. This one's mostly irrelevant, you know, 104 on OpenGL. The test is pretty old. CloudGate, once again, showing that my card, for some reasons, over, you know, clocking a lot better, or performing a lot better. Same with this, uh, was performing a lot better than other systems. Uh, this is to kind of show some temperatures. I was getting about 65. I think after some more extended use, I was pulling around 70. Um, and I've got a pretty warm case, and it's maybe 80 in my room down here, so it's hot. Uh, Firestrike Ultra, which isn't included on the comparison, as well as Firestrike Extreme here. Both of these uh, performing very well. This XFX card, even at its stock clocks, is better than most. For Skydiver, I pulled the number one fastest bench of all time, which is really impressive. And uh, Time Spy, once again, right up on top. So, XFX, good card.